Hello, and welcome to another session on using Blender for video editing. Today, it's all about audio, hence the headphones. So one important thing to know right, for, right off the start is that audio in Blender works differently from video. Uh, what we've seen with the video strips is that the order matters, where something appears in, in terms of the channels and the sequencer matters. With audio, we don't need to worry about where they are as long as they are there at, the, at that time position, Blender will play them and everything just gets mixed together. So it's a lot easier to work with. And so in terms of using audio, there's basically a few things that we need to talk about. How to add it into your project, uh, how to adjust the settings, and then beyond that, something simple like how would you uh, do a crossfade between from one audio strip to the next? Let's get started with the basics. So here uh, on the screen, let's pretend that this was like a slideshow or something and I wanted to add an audio track to it. Well, we're adding. So we go to the add menu and click on sound. And then you just browse around and find the sound you want, the sound file and double click. And now it's added. Uh, let's go ahead and play it now. See what it sounds like. That sounds nice. Um, now, what can we do now that it's added? You can see here in the properties region, uh, there's a few different things. So the first off is this button here. That's if you wanted to disable it to, to just mute it for a, for a time in case you're doing some previews and it's getting annoying. You just want to focus on looking at it and not listening to it. So that you can click that to toggle it on and off. Uh, scrolling down, there is if pretty much all of the options you want to work with are right here. This first option, mono, you click that if you have a stereo uh, sound track uh, or sound of strip and you want to convert it to mono. There is a reason for that and I'll get to that in a second. But let's move on and the next thing is draw waveform. This is a fantastic option. I'll click it now. If you need to start synchronizing your strips. Uh, for example, you have uh, two different videos of the exact same thing uh, and you want to try to align them properly on the timeline. Uh, when you can see the audio like it is now, if I had two different things, you could see where you know there's the different loud points and soft points. It makes it very simple, well, simpler to, to align them. So it's fun to have, it's very good to have it on when you're synchronizing. It, it does, uh, it might slow things down a little bit though. So once you're done with your synchronizing, you can just check, uncheck it and to turn it off and because you won't need it anymore. Beyond those things, the next three things that are unique to audio strips and we haven't seen in video strips are these ones here, volume, pitch, and pan. Volume is essentially, you know, how loud the, that, uh, audio strip is going to be inside of your project. Uh, starts out as one, which is 100% of the original audio uh, from the file. You can take it down to zero, which means it'll be silent. 0.5 is 50%, but you can go beyond that. You can say two to make it double the original audio, but you got to be careful about that because um, when if you bring it too high, then everything just starts getting distorted. Uh, Blender really isn't the best tool for doing that kind of thing. I, I would actually recommend um, using a different program entirely to work with your audio, make it nice and clean, and then bring it, in, bring it into Blender and position it where you need it. But uh, anyway, that aside, so next up is pitch. And pitch is a fun one to play with, but uh, I don't use it that much here. It'll change things to sound um, higher or lower, uh, but at the same time, it'll also change the uh, the duration of it. So if it's high and squeaky, it'll also play a lot faster and it'll run, it'll finish sooner. As an example, let me if let me play this again so we can remember what it sounds like. Okay, I'm gonna stop that and I'm gonna change pitch to three, like 300% and play that. Okay. So you can see there's there's probably some value in that. Uh, I do use it sometimes for, for doing uh, speed up, sped up sections of video, 
but that's like a discussion on its own. Uh, finally, the last thing is pan, which is where you want the sound to come from. So zero means it's dead center, minus one means it's on the left side, and then one is on the right side. There's actually also minus two and plus two, but I only have stereo speakers. I don't, I don't know how that would sound. Now, what I said before about the mono option, that applies here. If your audio source is stereo, setting the pan will not do anything. So I'm pretty sure this is stereo. So let me try right now. I'll try and force this to the left side by setting to minus one and I'll play it. Yeah, it's all like this coming out of both, both speakers. So now if I click mono and then play, let's see. Yeah, there we go. So now it's on my left side. And if I switch it to one, it's on the right side. Okay, so that is pretty much it for how to import. Sorry, I'm kind of distracting. That's how it is for. That's pretty much all it is for how to add a, uh, a audio file for a soundtrack and then making the adjustments. Uh, next up is just to talk about what how you would go about um, uh, doing a crossfade between two. And for that, I will switch to a different project file. Okay, so I've loaded up another. Blender file, and this one we've got two different segments from two uh, Blender open source uh, movie projects. This first one is Agent 327, and then followed up by a, f a short section from near the beginning of the Sintel movie. Okay, so if I take Sintel, the Sintel strip, and I put it over top here, and then I adjust the endpoints here. This will work as we expect. So Sintel will immediately be visible. There's no crossfade happening. And also with the audio, like I said before, it'll just mix those two together. So we'll hear the 327 and Sintel going at the same time. I mean, maybe it's a little bit hard to hear them both because one's louder than the other. Uh, but let's start by doing what we're used to. So I'm going to create the, uh, the crossfade between the video portions. So I select the first, then the second, and I'll go to add, effect strip, and gamma cross. So if we just, if I just scrub through that, you can see that does a nice transition between the two. Now, how do we do the same thing for audio? It's similar. So we'll start by right clicking on the first audio strip then I'll hold down my shift key and right click on the second audio strip. And now instead of going to the add, which is where you might expect to find it, you go to the strip menu and right here in the middle, crossfade sounds. You click that and as you can see, all of a sudden the graph editor got populated by a whole bunch of stuff, which um, I have visible here just to let you know what's happening is it's adding keyframes. That's something we're going to talk about in a future session. But let's just go ahead and listen to this now. Just go back to the beginning and hit the play. So that was pretty much it. So today we've covered off um, importing uh, sound and just adjusting those settings. And also right here, the, uh, the crossfade effect, which is again, selecting your first audio strip, selecting the second audio strip, then going to the strip menu and saying crossfades. And what it does is that it takes the first one and then as soon as the second one for that period of overlap, it'll start bringing the volume down to zero while raising the other one up to 100%. Uh, so that's it. That's our intro to working with audio. And now I hope uh, you'll be able to use that to add all your all the audio you need to your videos. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.